Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting and inspiring episode of the Inspired Life Vancouver. I'm your host Zara Durrani. It has been my pleasure and honor to bring you amazing locals who've been making a positive impact in our community as well as inspiring me and perhaps you as you join in to our conversation today. Joining me is someone who just flew in back into Vancouver. She was in Africa for a little bit. She has modeled around the world. She's a very talented photographer, a very sought after photographer. She's also the owner of a modeling agency and the list just goes on. So we will dig right in. Joining me right now is perhaps a very jet lagged but very talented <laughs> multidisciplinary artist. I'm talking about none other than Jenna Berman. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. I'm, I think it's actually good because it is keeping me awake. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. I might be asleep, so it's putting me on like the right schedule now. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you so much. We weren't sure we knew you had. 32 hours of flying, yeah. my goodness. I think it ended up being more because my last flight got delayed quite a lot, but yeah, I'm here. You're it's here, yeah. you made it, and you were so sweet Instagramming me, <laughs> keeping me up to date with what's I happening. I was worried because I lost everything. I was like, I don't even have lip gloss, like I don't have anything. So yeah, I'm, I got my bag this morning and everything is fine. I'm All okay. is well in the world and you look yeah. beautiful. I love your Thank outfit. You. I must say I love your dress, your belt, your, the whole yeah. the whole thing. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> it's kind of like pirate chic a little. Yeah, I'm into yeah. it. I, as I was saying, it reminds me of Stevie Nicks a little bit. Yeah. So super cool. Thank you. So you travel a lot, yeah. you know. Uh, your name keeps coming up, like several people locally. When it comes to a talented photographer, they're like, this girl, Jenna Berman, She's absolutely amazing. You know, through social media, I kept seeing your name. And then when finally our mutual agent um, was like, Zara, I think she would make a great guest. And I was like, yeah, I think you're right. She would. <laughs> and, you know, I'm so glad the stars aligned and here you are. And I was doing some digging around through your social media, mm -hmm. snooping, like we're going way back <laughs> into stories. I, could, I was like, I'm going, I'm like, the do I like real? <laughs> yes. I'm like, do I? Do I like this or no? What, what, is that creepy? <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's normal, especially yeah. if you're considering someone as a guest. As a guest, yeah. to really get to know who this person is. And yeah. I think you're a very fascinating person and very artistic and very gifted. You. you know, if I must say so, I was on your website yesterday and checking mm -hmm. out your website because not only are you very beautiful, very talented model, <laughs> an actor, but also so gifted as a photographer. It's, I find that very fascinating, but I think some of the best directors are actors mm. because they know how to speak to talent. Yeah. So we'll back up here because I think you have a very interesting story. You started out as a model, so tell me about yeah. that. Um, I was very, very young. I was, I think, nine or 10. I was living in South Africa. And I didn't know that modeling was something you, like I didn't know you had to be like a cute kid or anything like that or it was competitive. I just remember a girl in my class came to school and she had gotten paid to take photos over the weekend and I was like, that's sick, like I want money. And I think I just went home, opened up um, like a phone book that we had back then when I was that young and I looked up a kid's agency and I made an appointment. Yourself. Yeah. And then I told my so you're mom. you're very business savvy, like from the get go. Yeah, but I didn't think about it that way. I yeah. just thought like, I'm going to be my making money and my mom's going to have to deal with it. And so I told her and at first she was kind of annoyed because I think the place I made an appointment was like two hours away. But she later on told me she really respected that I took the initiative and did that. And so she took me and um, I started doing TV commercials and like kids clothing catalogs and stuff like that. And I got a bank account and yeah, I just, I thought, but I thought any kid could do it. And I think most kids can, you know, like it's fun when you're a kid, you don't mm -hmm. think it's that serious. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a very long time ago. And kids are some of the freest actors and models because yeah. when it comes to your imagination and 
thinking of things. You're just mm. like, this is play and wow, yeah. I'm making money so I can buy more toys. And or everyone on set is so great with kids and they're treating you like you're just there to have fun. You know, they're not mm. treating you like a grown up who's there to do really hard work. So you just end up having a great day and getting fed and, you know, getting paid. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. And you've traveled with your modeling career. Mm. So tell us about some of the countries and places um, you've been to because you've done some very interesting campaigns. Yeah, um, so I left South Africa when I was a teenager and then eventually, a few years later, I when I started traveling as a model, um, I realized that was a way that I could essentially just experience some of the world and um, it was an easy way to do that. So I first went to Asia. Um, I went to live in Korea for a bit and I really love Seoul. Um, and then I went back to South Africa by myself actually when I was about 16 or 17, lived back there by myself for a few years, um, working, and then I kind of bounced around. I went to New York for a little bit, Toronto for a little bit, and then I went back to Asia, and I actually based myself in Hong Kong for about five to six years. Hmm. And then um, I came from Hong Kong to Vancouver. But I'd say I stayed in Hong Kong for quite a while because I, I did really well there. Hmm. I have a specific look where... I'm not Asian, but I, I think I look like I could be. Some people your think I am, yeah. Your eyes, and I was gonna say, if you don't mind me saying this, yeah. you have this baby face, almost <laughs> like a doll. Like yeah. even when I was seeing your photos, I'm like, she is so beautiful. Thank you. And it's quite amazing to see someone who's also very beautiful, young, but also ridiculously talented. Thank you. Like I was seeing some of your acting work, this girl, I can tell you're connected to something inside of you. I can, you know, feel it. And That's I love... That's a nice thing to say. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can sense that you know, through your work, through the body of your work. And I was very excited to have this conversation to see that what that journey is like. Because I mm. think as a creative spirit, once you tap into that source energy, mm. when you tap into that artistic energy then you can just flow and I think that's yeah. what you're doing I feel like from your background in dance to like everything I think you're just flowing and enjoying sharing that yeah. with the world that does kind of feel like what I'm doing often I don't really have an answer for what I'm doing because I don't have a plan and I don't have a, a formula for doing anything I just kind of it sounds very nonchalant or um fickle but I kind of just do whatever I want hmm. um, but it's because those are the things that I'm curious about and drawn to hmm. so it's not um, yeah it's not very thought out or formulaic but it, they're but just it's connected yeah to your heart. it just I You're just connected. do it you and I think in in a way when we think of children and I remember when I would take acting classes they would talk about getting connected to your childlike spirit and, you know, whether like my dog, Loki, or your <laughs> cat. Yeah. Cats. Multiple, yeah. <laughs> you know, they just have this mm. intuition. Yeah. And, uh, they're just when, being. Yes. Yeah. And they're following that vibration. So even when I saw you move in this, like, you know, beautiful video um, that I saw on your website, and... I can tell by looking at you through that video that you are more than just, you're more than a model. You know, sure. not that it means that modeling is just one thing, but I can, you no, can I, I sense think... that, you know, it's like, because I found that video to be like poetry in motion, but Aww. it was also um, like you wanting to share a story. Yeah. Whether it is with or without words. Mm -hmm. It's true, yeah. I just actually recorded the follow-up, mm. um, I've done the audio, my friend Evan Conrad, he's one of the most talented people in the entire world, and he kind of mixed some audio in with my words, and um, sounds very cinematic and stuff like that, um, so yeah, that's, I think those things, it's, it's something that I do just for me to do, mm. there's no... You know, I don't make money from that or anything like that. Um, but thank you. I think that's a really nice thing to say because I do think that the best models 
evokes some sort of feeling like Kate Moss and it's not just that her face is perfect mathematically which it is but she evokes something I think we've kind of lost that a little bit in modeling mm. I think that the nepo models that are out today are mm. kind of lacking a little bit in that do you know what I mean like mm. when somebody blows up because there's something intrinsic about them that makes you feel a certain way mm. with however they evoke a feeling in a photo um but yes I think that's a really nice thing to say yeah yeah no I'm very observant like I didn't model internationally but I did mm -hmm. start like that you definitely locally. Could. <laughs> thank you thank you kindly I started like that locally and mm -hmm. for a long time people would my mom would say to get into acting and people would tell me to get into hosting and I was like no they were like your personality and I was like no first I was like just modeling and that's my then I was like acting and mm -hmm. but I realized there was something about hosting and being me because when I was modeling or acting I was always putting on mm -hmm. this mask of this other persona but when it came to hosting it was getting in touch with myself and then asking questions and being curious about people like yourself mm -hmm and learning from them. So I love that part of storytelling. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still acting, I still yeah. do other things, but I realize like I'm a very curious person and I love people mm -hmm. and I love um, getting deeper. You know, it's like I've studied yoga and meditation and meditated for like 11, 12 days up on a mountain, like Did doing... Vipassana? I did Vipassana, oh my yes. God, yes. I want to do it so badly. I would highly recommend. Yeah. Um, but don't they make you do kind of an introductory shorter thing before you're allowed to do the 10, 11 day one? N maybe. I don't know if it's changed, but that's oh. um, the introductory one you can do afterwards. Like okay. this is back when I did it. But I was going through a breakup. I finished my first national show as a host, mm -hmm. Life and Style with Zara. And I went through a very low period between the breakup and that and my identity was wrapped around it and I remember my yoga teacher saying that when you're ready you will know that Vipassana is there mm -hmm. and honestly it was such a cleansing and inner detox of an experience mm -hmm. of sitting with myself forgiving myself forgiving the other person and just releasing the heaviness that I was carrying within and just knowing that really all that I need is breath. Mm -hmm. And if I have my health, I have everything. Yeah. Do you feel like when you went in and when you left, you were kind of two different versions of yourself? I felt so much lighter. Yeah. Like I, and they say this and they say to not have expectations around it. I did this when I was 29. So I'm turning 41 in a week. What? And yeah, huh. <laughs> yes, that's encouraging. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. And um, if you told me you were 25, I'd be like, yeah, makes sense. But also, I think we're trained to believe that certain ages look a certain way. I think from TV, we've just been trained to think that because there's 30 year olds playing high school students. Yes. That that's what a high school student looks like. Yes. But that's not at yes. all accurate. Yeah. And the person we have here before you, Simone, she was um, a nutrition and um, a nutritionist and a personal trainer. And then just talking to her about women's bodies and hormones and mm. food and how, because now we're talking about longevity. Yeah. And not just looking well, but having that energy and that vital life force inside of us mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when people used to, you know, when it was the Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. And they were, what, like, late 40s, like some in their 50s. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> you know, versus, like, the women, like yourself yeah. or me or whatever. And it, it's so much of the habits and so yeah. much, I think, of inner, mm -hmm. of what is happening inside. I How so too. am I healing myself like what does that look mm -hmm. like and having those conversations whether for me whether it's with my therapist or journaling yeah or you know it's like the amazing people I've had on here and wanting to dig deep because I think when we do that cleanse it's like this weight Releases this heaviness things. falls 
you I know? Think so, yeah. And then we can be creative, like the work mm -hmm. you're doing, right? Like, it's like that comes, it comes also, like, for me, I started playing with colors and painting mm -hmm. um, when I first stopped drinking, and it's been about nine, ten years. Oh, okay. And to release, thank you, to release anxious feelings mm -hmm. and I started just playing with colors yeah and how that would help with that it and I really was, is therapeutic oh my god mm -hmm. so whatever feelings I would feel inside I would pour them on the canvas and it would just get out yeah get out of me without speaking especially if you can get to that point where you're not focused on the end result yeah but actually just the process of doing it mm. I think that's the most therapeutic because mm -hmm. if you get too caught up in what it's going to look like it's never really that beneficial as you're doing it. And I see you've been doing that quite a bit. Yeah. But I digress. I'm going to backtrack modeling and then I'm yeah. going to, you know, talk about your art because I saw, I was like, I was going through, I really clicked on the art part because oh. it's something I told myself before summer is over, I need to sit on my balcony and perhaps mm -hmm. like this weekend or, you know, before my birthday, I'm like, I love the clouds. I'm like, I need to just, and I like big canvases. Yeah. Like I like to be able to move around on it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so modeling yeah you're traveling around the world you're based in hong kong you yeah. come to vancouver mm -hmm. you've done some big big campaigns dior levi's like you know yeah amazing projects what inspired you to create your own you know modeling agency mm. well i actually when i moved to vancouver i started assisting at the agency that managed me at the time just mm. kind of helping out the vancouver agent learning a little bit i thought why not i have some free time now the modeling industry here is not as big as where i had come from so um i was happy to help and then eventually it got to a point where i was working with the girls up until a certain point um they eventually made me the agent of vancouver and head office in toronto managed me um and so I found I was bringing these girls to a certain level and developing them in a certain way, but ultimately placing them internationally wasn't up to me because I wasn't head office. Mm -hmm. And I just found that frustrating. Mm -hmm. And it was just a logical step for me to do my own company. It wasn't Because really... that was the journey you'd had and you traveled. Yeah, and there were a lot of um, problems. There still are a lot of problems in the modeling industry. I mean, it's not unionized. It, in New York it is, and things are slowly changing. But... Um, yeah, so there were a lot of things that I had run into over the years where it just didn't make any sense to me, um, ethically, just in a, a multitude of ways. And I always thought if I would do this, I would do this way differently. And I didn't really plan on doing it. I just kind of got to a point where I thought, like, why not? Like, I can mm. do it. So I let the agency know what I was doing, and they... Um, like understood why I wanted to do that. And I just, I have this thing in my brain that I truly, <laughs> sounds very delusional, but like, I really believe I can do anything. Mm. I actually think that if I <laughs> really put my mind to it, I could probably fly. Mm. And I, that might be wrong, but that belief in my mind that doesn't think it's wrong I think is the reason I've done everything that I've done because I've never had the thought in my head that I could try something and have it fail. So I just decided I should do a company and so I <laughs> licensed and did all that. And I love that. And you know, and there's nothing, I, I think more people and even for myself, I feel like I was more like that in my 20s mm -hmm. and you know sometimes I when I keep going and keep the momentum and I'm like Zara we're gonna make this happen we're gonna things mm -hmm. are going to change like I got a text message today about a possible you know what I was mentioning I won't talk about it right now mm -hmm. but that is exactly what I wanted to manifest mm -hmm. and you know I'm surrendering this and my job is to show up be of service yeah to not just my show and to show up as the best me, but to my guests, mm. to be of service to them, to be open to them, to share their story in the best way possible. Because when I come from that mindset, then things start to, you know, this Naturally is kind of woo woo, just... but I believe in this. No, no, no. When like, you work from your heart, real... when you mm. work from your heart, when your heart opens up, yeah. 
and you're focusing on how can I give, mm -hmm. things change. Yeah, I think it's a natural flow state, the mm -hmm. way that energy works, and it's very difficult to describe it, but there are areas in my life where I definitely struggle with things, but when it comes to creativity or work, I don't at all. Mm. I really have always trusted my intuition. I don't know why it's like that. And as I said, it's not like that with every area, but those are definitely, I'm definitely very lucky um, because it's not something that I cultivated. Um, and I haven't fully figured out mm. why I'm like that, but I'm very thankful for it. Mm. And I, I can feel it. I don't know how to describe it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you feel like you are in that flow of life force energy, yeah, it's difficult to... Like when I know to, something yeah. is going to work and happen, I don't know how to explain mm. it. But I get it with acting roles too. Like I know when I'm going to do something mm. and I don't even worry about the audition. I'm just like, no, I'm like, I'm going to get it. It's mm. fine. And I don't know why. <laughs> I love that. No, but, but so much of that is the inner belief. Yeah. And I ask a lot of people, like, how do you deal with the inner critic? Because that's something that I've struggled with, mm. you know, whether it's like things that I'm speaking about myself that I've heard when I was growing up or, mm. you know, as a child, you can internalize things. And, um, if you go to my bathroom or in my bedroom, like I have little sticky notes on my fridge, like, mm. uh, post-it notes where I write like little love letters to myself yeah. because you need someone who's going to be like, high five, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's and, important. And it's important. I, it's taken me this long to be like, instead of waiting for that from someone else, I'm mm -hmm. going to do that for me. Yeah. And it's not about being high on yourself. But the thing is, when we're creative people and when we, whether it's through your modeling or painting or acting or mm -hmm. hosting here or podcast, when we put a part of ourselves into the world, you're also putting yourself out there to be criticized, mm -hmm. to be ridiculed, for people to judge and yeah. have, and, you know, make remarks about the work that you're doing. It's very vulnerable. Yeah. I never really think about it. Mm, <laughs> like, that's, that's great. I, I mean, good have for to be you. Honest. That's good for you. I would like to have more of that. <laughs> um, I don't know why. I am trying to. These are things that I think about and consider and I don't have fully developed thoughts on it yet it's not that I'm impermeable like I I can have my feelings hurt mm. and I can you know feel like something is unfair or something is said about me that it's wrong but I think I'm much more focused on what I want to do mm. instead of allowing those other voices to like take yeah over and I think because do you think that this is helpful because for me, when I'm busy and I've mm -hmm. got my hands in a few different things, yes. I'm focused on the solution. I'm focused on mm -hmm. moving ahead instead of if someone's trying to create, you know, yeah. whatever energy. I'm like, okay, I may get in the moment. Yeah, like it can annoy you. Yes. But at the same time, I'm like, I just want to focus on getting the job mm -hmm. done and moving on to the next thing. I Do you think, think right. the fact that you're doing multiple different things, yeah. that that helps? Yes, I think that I forget how much I'm doing every day because I'm very used to it. Mm. But I definitely think that because I always have so much going on and I like it that way. Mm. Yeah, like if I hear something someone said about me or some judgment, um, it yeah, it can annoy me for a split second. But I genuinely don't have that much time to mm. really indulge. Mm. Um, like, it has to get really, really bad before I react in some way to try put an end to something or um, resolve something. So, yeah, I think it definitely helps to be very busy and, and more focused on yourself. I just naturally have a type of a brain that if I'm interested in something, it's, it's so consuming. Mm. I have to fully go into it. Mm. I will stay up all night reading and just... You know, and then I can forget about it the next week and be like, okay, I did that onto the next thing. And then I have a new interest um, that I need to master within a month and I'm onto the next thing. So I think I just, I get so consumed with whatever I'm curious about or what I want to do that 
it's less interesting mm. what people are saying or, or even what anyone else is doing. Even with the modeling agency stuff, I'm friendly with a couple other agents in town and sometimes they'll make a comment like, oh, you know, this girl on that person's board. And I say, no, I don't look at anyone else's roster and it's not a conscious decision. I just like not in a bad way, but I don't care. Mm. I'm working with my models and I believe in them. I love them and I love what I do. So it doesn't don't think it's going to serve me. Mm. It never occurs to me to look at what anyone else is doing. I love that. And I think what, what it's making me think of is focus on where your feet are, where your feet yeah. are planted and on your side of the street instead of like else there. And it'll never help you anyway to look at what somebody else is doing. Mm. And that goes for any industry or maybe not every industry. Actually, there are some industries that are, you know, quite different um, and more formulaic. But I think especially in anything creative, mm. <laughs> anything art related in any way, mm. don't compare at all. I love that. Yeah. Um, modeling and traveling at such a young age. Mm. What, how do you feel that has shaped you? Because I was mentioning earlier, you know, by the age of seven, I lived in seven, seven different countries, countries yeah. and exposed to different cultures, languages, cuisine, yeah. people, cities, airplanes it changes you yeah. you know in like the best way and then there's times that i'm like i wonder what you know get at it's put this wanderlust inside of me mm -hmm. that you know i was speaking to this award-winning like showrunner who's produced and created all these shows and saying that how i want to go to paris and vancouver will be home and i'm done doing this and this and he's like so pretty much being like a teenager and i was like why not mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like I, a part of me is like, I realize there is this curiosity inside of me to see the world because of mm -hmm. my, you know, how I, I think was. it feels available to you yeah. because it has been. Um, and I think a lot of people have this idea that it's such a crazy thing to do. Or, I mean, even with me, everyone's like, oh my God, Jenna, like, I can't believe you're going to Rwanda, whatever, whatever it is, wherever I'm going mm. somewhere far away. Mm. And I'm, I always just think, why not? It's not that crazy, actually. Mm. You know, it's a little bit further than going to Mexico mm -hmm. or, you know, a place that's more normalized to go. Um, but even, yeah, going to Paris, like, it's not that crazy. Mm -hmm. If it makes you happy, yeah. people, even when you think about money, people spend so much money going out and drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, how many nights out is a plane ticket to Paris? Exactly. Not that many. Exactly. So how do you feel that traveling with your modeling career shaped your view of the world and shaped you into who you are today? I guess it's difficult because I don't know any different. I don't know what I would be like if it weren't that way. But I do remember being a kid and thinking of America, which when you don't live in North America, it encompasses Canada as mm -hmm. well. It's just this is America. Mm -hmm. I thought of it as this very far off place that I would definitely never get to. Like mm. the people on TV talked like that and that was this far off dreamland that I would never visit. Mm. And then, you know, things rapidly changed as soon as I was 13 and we moved away. And I think all of the traveling, it kind of makes you realize the endless possibilities of life and experiences that you can have. and. It definitely frees your mind to be more open to everything in every situation mm. and not get stuck in a specific way of thinking or relating to a specific because person. Because you're always like on the go and there's also a lot of rejection. Yeah, and you, you adapt to cultures and mm. different people that you meet and I think overall it makes you just softer mm. in a good way and more open mm. because you know when you're going to a lot of different places with a lot of different beliefs and customs you can't have a very narrow my way is the right way or, or some type of thinking like that um, but I, I definitely think it's contributed to me feeling like I can do anything mm. anything is possible I can go anywhere um, because I've just, I guess, first I was forced to travel and I hated it and I missed South Africa so much. I felt, felt like I was ripped away. 
Um, but then as soon as I started traveling on my own, mm. I felt more empowered. Mm, like Hong Kong. What was that experience like? I've only been to the airport there Uh, on my way to Bali. The airport is pretty good. I know. (laughs) And I was like, we had, I think, like six hours or something. And by the time you go into the city and come back, and Mm -hmm. what if we missed our... That's not worth six hours. Yeah. And I was... I love Hong Kong. I actually just interviewed someone last week uh, who did this film and they work between Hong Kong, Vancouver and LA Mm -hmm. and you know and I got to see like how beautiful it was but they also talk about the modeling world Mm -hmm. there and the movie is called Modelizer. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny, it's a rom-com, it's it's cute and but it it also showed like how beautiful Hong Kong is Is. and I was like wow it put this desire inside of me to see it so how was that experience for you living there on your own how old were you when you were there um i was i think 18 or 19 Mm -hmm. yeah when i moved between 17 and 19 i think Mm -hmm. when i moved there um uh, we call it home kong people that have stayed there for a while yeah it feels like home Mm. um it was um you know how people talk about new york in the 80s okay like a city in its prime or its Mm -hmm. heyday when it was a melting pot of everyone But I don't think New York's really like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is a melting pot, but it's not what people write about. I think I got Hong Kong in its era of mm. the best days in Hong Kong. Um, every day we would go out and meet different people. But it is different when you're living in Hong Kong as a model. Um, you know, you're invited out for free dinners and drinks every night. So it's very easy to get sucked into a lifestyle that's not particularly healthy. Um, and that was the extent of my college years. You mm-hmm. know, I think I tried to fit in with a crowd that was doing that, going out and drinking every night. But it also is hard because what are you going to do, sit at home in your little shoebox of an apartment and not go and have a free dinner, have amazing food, you're just going to stay home and not have any fun. Um, But that's not really who I am. I don't like clubs. I don't like drinking. I don't enjoy any of those things. I always tried to do it to fit in when I was about 19. Same. I always felt like I was betraying myself. You know, I never, never understood why I couldn't have as much fun as everyone else. And I thought there was something wrong with me that I got overwhelmed in nightclubs with too much noise and too much stimulation for me and not my vibe. But Hong Kong itself, you know, it is a concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also beautiful. There's islands, there's tropical beaches, you know, it's, it has these elements of places that look like you're in Thailand. Mm. And it's, half a day away Mm. so I miss it a lot Mm. but you know things have changed there a lot since a lot of things happened yes um and it's not what it used to be I know the modeling industry there is not what it used to be um so I feel lucky that I lived there when I did but I don't think it'll ever be the same Mm -hmm. yeah what would you say I mean it would be hard to like pinpoint but if you were to just think off from the top of your head like a shoot or a project that you worked on that really stands out for you in your modeling career that you had this aha moment of wow I get to do this this is my work you know what I mean I've had it quite a few times when you on location somewhere Mm -hmm. beautiful and you paid to be there but I really think the main time I had that was when I was 10 (laughs) My first job, mm. it was actually my first audition that I ever went to. It was a super soaker commercial. Good luck to anyone trying to find it because I've tried and I can't find mm. it. Um, but it was, yeah, I remember I booked it and I got dropped off for the day and I was just running around the garden eating food and like having fun with a water gun. Mm. And like, and they you're were like, I'm me. playing. Yeah, I'm like, I was how- having the best time. So I definitely thought it then. Um, but I also, I work with Timothy Hung a lot. He does the mm-hmm. makeup for Dior when mm-hmm. I worked with them. I saw those photos. They were absolutely stunning. Thank you. He's such a genius, creatively, such an artist. And I always get blown away by everything that he does, um, whether it's more classic or a little bit more high fashion. He's just incredible. Um, And I have that feeling a lot when I see myself transformed by him Mm. because sometimes I don't recognize myself Mm -hmm. in a great way. He can really make you look like a complete different creature. And yeah, I definitely had that moment where I think sometimes 
wow, like this is so lucky because most people, it's completely abnormal to have your makeup done by anyone, but for an artist to completely transform you. And I mean, he does crazy things. He did a shoot with origami on my head and my was painted from head to toe. So I think working with really, really creative, just genius minds, I get that feeling then. Yeah. Like out of the box. And do you, yeah. also it's making me think of really bringing the acting in there. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of the same. modeling and acting is the same. I mean, it's like sometimes you're speaking, sometimes you're not yeah. as a model. But I mean, it should be the yeah. same. Um, people so. have this idea sometimes, even when they get into modeling, like, oh, you just stand there and look pretty. No, you can tell immediately when somebody is doing that mm. and it never translates into anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm. I think it, it can be very similar. Mm. Yeah. And you come from a dance background, so that really yeah. helps with modeling. I think so. My mom is a ballerina. She still mm. is. And I think she took me to ballet class when I was like nine months old. Yeah. I walked at like nine months and she was like, perfect time for ballet. <laughs> so, um, and I still do um, dancing. And yeah, I think it does help for mm -hmm. sure. Just the physicality of things and but, you know, posing can be really hard work. Sometimes you hurt for days afterwards. I'm sure you know. <laughs> it can really it, it's, get to it, you. It's been a while, but yeah, yes, yes. Depends what you're doing. What it can really... Yes, yeah. completely. Yeah. So after, you know, um, modeling, when did you decide? What came next? Like, was it acting that came next or was it starting your own agency that came next? Acting came next. Um, it was never something that I intended to do. I always thought that I had the opposite personality type that you needed to be an actress. Mm. Um, I don't actually like having a lot of attention on me. This is fine. I'm very good one-on-one -on -one speaking to people. I'm very comfortable with that. But I don't like um, lots of people mm. looking at me, crowds, things like that. Lots of cameras, though, that's somehow fine. I feel nothing. Because you're used to that. Yeah, yeah. you could put a hundred cameras You have, like, tr at me. trained. It's, like, in your <laughs> yeah. butt. You're just, like, yeah. I but um, I've never really... Um, I just never thought that I was the type of person that would even be able to get anywhere with acting. Um, it started when I moved here, and my modeling agents just suggested I try it out because there was a big industry here. And then I went to my first audition, and I booked it. And I think that one was really luck because I looked like a specific character from a book. Um, but then, what character is that? <laughs> it's in Halo. Her name is Kelly. I was seeing those <laughs> photos, and actually on your IMDb, when yeah. I see, I'm like, you look different, like a different <laughs> person. Yeah. In every one of those photos. Yeah, it's like a chameleon. Type. I love that. Thank you. I'm like, that is, you know, I think that's like merging these two worlds because. Yeah. Sometimes in the acting industry, there can be this thing of like, okay, she's a model. Like, yeah, I feel sure. like I've had to work, you know, it's like I haven't had the kind of career you had, but I felt that I had to really prove mm -hmm. that I was more than just a pretty face who could take yeah. a pretty picture and sh emote yeah. and connect. There's an assumption that you might think things are going to fall into your lap because mm -hmm. of the way you look. And you know what? That can happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's not going to build a career for you mm -hmm. um, if there's nothing else going on. But yeah, I just, I, I didn't realize it was something I might enjoy until I did it. Mm -hmm. And I think booking that first job here put me in a different category that I might not have been in otherwise where I was getting different opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and you yeah. almost look, I mean out of this world, like ethereal, like there's almost this ethereal. Like in general or in that? In, in general oh, too, but you. also in there, yeah. almost like an alien. I hope that doesn't come no, across in that. No, she's meant to be okay. kind of engineered. I had like huge I, contact yes, lenses. I know, but also was, your face, like, mm -hmm. you know, and I was, excuse me to say this, this is like when I'm like meeting people, I'm just like, yeah, I watched this interview you did like 30 <laughs> years ago. No, it's and good. Like, I'm just going through, I'm just curious person. Yeah. I'm like, who is this person? What are they doing? Especially when I don't know you, this is the first time we're yeah. meeting. So I'm just Googling, I'm mm -hmm. going through IMDB, I'm going through your other interviews that you did. And oh, I love I'm being like, transformed. Yeah, no, I, I, I love not recognizing yeah. myself. Yeah, and I think there was one picture, it looked like an intense, you know, and I was like, okay, I like the fact that you're 
willing to also get dirty and like get in there and yeah. you want to not just play like you know these pretty and beautiful roles I actually which is... don't think I'm very well suited to those roles mm. where you're the big thing about your character is that you're pretty mm. I don't um I mean it is changing and you know with good writing mm -hmm. of course that isn't the case but with a lot of tv mm -hmm. um there are stereotypes that play into mm -hmm. a specific look mm. and um you know i guess growing up i would have seen the, the pretty girl in i never really watched a lot of tv or movies growing up and i still don't watch it but i know there's like the bitchy cheerleaders mm. typically like the pretty one and I'm just not trying to say that I'm really nice. I mean, I am nice, but I don't have any part of me that really wants to express that. Yeah. So it's those characters are just, you know. It's interesting the last little while, the stuff that I've been putting on tape, and mm -hmm. I'll just take like one little screenshot and share because I'm doing this show, which is all about inspiration mm -hmm. and I meditate and, mm -hmm. you know, journal. I'm very much into personal development. And then I will put a screenshot of where I'm just like giving this like <laughs> meanest look. And I like that because it's, I enjoy that because that's just like so different play and yeah. going, looking within yeah. to bring that out. Totally. Yeah. It's definitely fun. I mean, as I said, it's never something I thought I would enjoy, but now I do. Mm. Um, I love playing non-human characters. Mm. It's my favorite. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's how acting just kind of, and it informs each other. I think it works well with everything that I do. It's just one more thing, you know? So I'm shocked that <laughs> that happened in my life, but I'm glad it did. No, you're gifted. Like I was seeing, Thank and obviously you. you've had a bit of success, like working on um, not just like the local shows like I Zombies, CW shows yeah. and but you're also doing these independent projects and yeah. you're digging in and it's just this another art form that you're using to express and create and yeah. be creative and show different parts of yourself. I would say so, yeah. So acting and then when did photography happen because you're thank you. Like if I could, you know, swear I would right now, but I can't. You're um, very gifted. Thank you. And, you know, talking about Sam, like mm -hmm. our agent. Um, She's amazing. Shout out, Sam. Yeah. And then I started going, you know, I checked out your Instagram for your photography. Mm -hmm. And then I started, you know, looking online of the photos you've done of other people. Mm -hmm. There is something, because she was saying to me that a lot of the photos that people have photographed, and, you know, they're really good photographer friends of mine, but they're like, Zara, I meet you. You look so young. I see your photo. It's mm. like aged you. Yeah. You know, she's like, you need to meet this girl. And I was like, <laughs> who is this girl? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> her, na her name keeps like coming up. Her name keeps coming up. And there's certainly like a vibrant, and you know, I can see now that meeting you, like a vibe to you that I think it comes in your photos. And when I see your body of work, where it's almost got a, it's got a New York 90s photographer kind of vibe. Thank you. I love yeah? that. Yeah? Really? Yeah. Like when I think of it's mm -hmm. not, it doesn't seem like this time. Thank you. I is, that, no, uh, is that intentional? No, nothing. <laughs> okay, that's not a good thing to say that nothing I do is intentional. No, because but, it definitely is, but it's not very, I never think of, wanting something to be perceived a certain way mm. i just know how i want something to look and mm. i never think about it until the person is in front of me and then i just think i want this picture this person to look like this mm. and i don't know why or where that comes from but photography was my first interest in life mm. um came before everything You're it just kidding. didn't become my job until later on mm. but when i was nine i said I think in grade two or three, we had to write out this thing about ourselves. It was called A Star Is Born, and then you write your name, and it's a picture of you. Like when I grow up, I wrote, I'm going to be a photographer. And I just thought that was a, just a fact. It wasn't 
like I'm gonna try my best to I just was like yeah I'm gonna be a photographer and I don't know why <laughs> mm. I remember looking at National Geographic and certain fashion editorials in South Africa that are always shot so beautifully because of the landscapes available mm. there and just thinking I want to make this it's so beautiful and it's like holding beauty in your hands you get to create it and it's almost instant mm. I can do it quickly and I can get that sense of satisfaction that something looks exactly how I want it to look very quickly mm. so I definitely think that was part of my life's plan I always knew I was gonna do that and I never thought I could fail <laughs> at it mm. so yeah it's definitely my I would say it's the easiest way that I can express myself really yeah mm. everything else I enjoy you know poetry, acting, art, dancing. But I can, sometimes with those things, it's a bit of finding a way. Hmm. And I can get the same satisfaction with photography. It's a straight line. Really? Like I know exactly. Hmm. Yeah. And is that self-taught? Yeah. Because, you know, I figured you being a model, like you just like, yeah. you've been doing it from such a mm -hmm. young age, photographed for so long, you just know understanding light and yeah. But it's more than that because... Well, I've never used a light, ever. Really? <laughs> yeah, I've never used a light. Mm. I do understand how to use natural mm. light, obviously. Mm. Um, but I've never... I have mm. lights that I can use, but I don't like the way it looks. Yeah, because what I was going to say was they don't look staged. Mm. And this is something when talking to Sam was... There is movement, there's like fluidity, mm -hmm. even when you're taking someone's portrait yeah. or headshot, like it's them. And I think like, I'll speak for myself, I found it very interesting. I find it interesting when it is just a headshot of me mm -hmm. as an actor. So mm -hmm. what I started doing a while ago, when I'm, so someone looked through my Instagram, like they were a good friend of mine mm -hmm. and they're like, where is this person? Because that's mm -hmm. for me is just fun. It's just me being me. I don't think about but it. That like what is the essence of what people want to buy into. That's what makes you bankable. <sighs> and that's, you know, what Sam and my other friend Al yeah. were saying. They're like, Zara, I want to see that. Yeah. And I think I was so focused on... Well, actors are always focused on trying to be something else. Yes. Mm. And I was like, okay, I want to show them I can be this detective. No. I can show them I can be this person. And, you know, maybe because I'm like this age now, so I'll tone down like no, the no, no, sexiness no. and all of this. Are you crazy? I just like, no, I, just creating boxes for myself. I me. think I started creating this. Yeah. Like, in like Because it makes you also feel like you have more control over something that you inherently don't have control over, which yeah. is getting booked. Um yeah, I get actors coming in with slideshow presentations. <laughs> I swear to God, they have um, all of their outfits planned out. They show me the slideshow. They say, this is my corporate. This is my this. This is my that. And I flat out tell them in the beginning, I say, you can tell me. I'm not going to listen to any of it. I'm not going to follow it. I'm not going to do it. I'm mm. not going to make you look like a doctor in one and a party girl in another. We're just going to have you looking like the best version of yourself. And, and I'm literally like, <laughs> I remember um, I don't know if it was Sam or my friend Al, they were like, no more blazer button up stuff. Because I was yeah. like, I'm just going to give this to them because this is me. Here you go. No. Hire me for the job. <laughs> you don't need to do that. And then Sam was like, Zara. She's probably like, what is this? Yeah, well, she's like, be you. And to be honest, yeah. that kind of is like, it's a bit emotional because it's like. Yeah, it's very when, emotional for actors. It's the most vulnerable thing. Because when I'm. A character whether as a model or as an actor or when mm -hmm. I work with brands because I work with brands sometimes as an influencer micro influencer whatever it's like okay I have this thing this is me but then when it's just you and you know people are looking at this picture you can't hide yeah and that and then there's also I feel like I was trying to sell myself so much you know mm. through that versus like being just this like being 
And it's like, how are you bringing it, it? It's interesting because it's like portraits or headshots. It's like you're literally photographing someone's essence. Yeah. Do you, it's like you're photographing like their soul a bit. Essentially, you should be, yeah. Do you feel like it's more emotional because if that gets judged, it's the real you and it's not like the characters getting a negative or it's not the character being rejected, it's really you. Maybe, and I think a part of that was like, let me show you everything I can do. Yeah. I can do like the tough guy. Yeah. I can be like this, I can be edgy, <laughs> I can be, you know, versus Sam was like. Do that in your audition. I know. Your headshot just. Yeah, and yeah. it's so weird. I don't know where it got in my brain to like well, I think show are, them. There's people that capitalize on actors thinking that way. Mm. I'm not saying it's always a bad idea. It's definitely not how I work, but. Yeah. How would you say, how did you switch this? Like, how do you think you got this sense of, like, in as a photographer, obviously I get it because you've been photographed for millions of years. Mm. I mean, not millions of years, but Pretty you know, much. You've had, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, especially when you've been doing it from such a young age, it's mm. like the back of your hand. Yeah. You understand people, you understand how to bring this out. And when I see your photos, I'm like, there is something special there. Thank you. There is something, you know, just like I was saying when I see you. And you were, I have to tell you this. <laughs> you were inspiring me. I was like, man, I got to, I got to like paint. I'm like, I'm seeing yes, the, your video, it. your dance video. I'm like, yes. I'm like, should I tell her? I'm like, she's inspiring me to like yeah. paint more. I'm like, I don't want to like copy her. But like, no, there's you no know, it's thing. like, I, I, you know, like a while ago, I would like go on Pinterest mm. and I would see these female body shapes mm. and I really enjoyed this is during COVID, you mm. know, just That's to like when I started painting. Okay, so one of my friends, she's French and lives between Paris and Ibiza and she would tell me to journal in the morning, longhand journaling, don't think about it, just write mm. so you get whatever is in here out on paper, three pages minimum. And then she was like doodle like color and whatever whatever comes to you just mm. do it you know just get it out and she would make sketches she's a very talented artist like mm. you know she has had exhibits like around the world mm -hmm. and that's I realized I really enjoyed doing the female shape yeah it's the most beautiful shape there is yeah and it was very interesting and um Right now, I haven't been doing anything because, mm. you know, your life gets busy. And I was like, I need to slow down. Yeah. And something that you've been saying reminds me of what Chris Haddock, who's created all these shows and won like 40 plus industry awards. And he's like, especially right now, you need to do things. We're not getting, making money from it and mm. making, so you're doing it for the love of it. And I yeah. think that's what you have. You have. You do your poetry, you mm. dance, you have your art, you do yeah. all these things. You're like, I don't care whether someone loves my work or not, no, I don't. or I don't care what they're doing. Mm. I'm just so focused on what's in front of me right here. Yeah. Which is such a big lesson for creatives to learn. I think so, yeah. I wish I could, I wish I knew why, because mm. I don't. But I mean, I, I'm neurodivergent, so I think Part of it is like when I have an interest in something, it is so consuming that I every day I really struggle with what I should do. It's paralysis because there's so many things I want to do if I have even two free hours, mm. which I don't often have. I, I could end up doing nothing because I just can't choose mm. what to do. Like should I do a painting? Although for painting, I like to have days free and to know that there's nothing coming up. So probably mm. not in two hours, but um, I just, I can never, I know that I'll never be able to do everything that I want to do in this lifetime. Mm. And that kills me. Mm. And I'll never be able to read every book I want to read. I'll never be able to master all the skills I want to. And that makes me so sad. So I'll live again though. Yeah. So, you know, there's always time, but... I'm, that's like my struggle. You have like, so many passions and interests. Yeah, and, and then I get a new one and mm. I'm like, oh God, well now I have to go and learn archery, which is my new one. Ah. Like now I have to, 
and I do, I have to do it. So yeah, it's struggle a bit. Mm. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I love that. And that's something I was really curious about because I see also you mixing art, being creative, being in front of the camera, behind the camera, and business. Mm. So that's something I'm very fascinated by. Yeah, I How actually, do you balance that? Art versus commerce. You know, like both of them, like, you um, know, because I think a lot of creatives, like in the beginning, like have no in business my, sense. <laughs> in, in my 20s, I struggled with that a lot. Yeah. Um, I actually have a pretty, I definitely lean very creative, but my brain is actually pretty evenly balanced between those two areas mm. and I didn't go to business school or anything like I didn't finish high school so I'm formally trained to do absolutely nothing um, but I liked a certain area of the modeling industry and so I learned business in order to do that mm. and when you are getting satisfaction out of it and when you are helping young girls mold a career for themselves and influencing them the way that you wish you were influenced when you were 16 it's easy to run the business in a certain way and because you're passionate about it because you yeah, have that experience totally yeah and you see the impact it's having on people's lives and not that we're saving lives as modeling <laughs> agents but um but you are. people can be in the wrong hands yes 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 so um i've heard yeah. a lot of horrible stories of from friends of mine who've gone to Tokyo, who've yeah. gone to, you know, like it's different horrific. parts of the world where, you know, they didn't have that support. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it can be, it can ruin your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think modeling is a journey that's different for every single person that's on it. Mm -hmm. It can be the best thing that ever happened to you and it can be the worst. And mm -hmm. it really depends who you're working with. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's just learning the business aspect of things was as easy for me because I was interested in it mm. and I wanted to do it and anytime I'm interested in something um, I can't learn enough about it mm. so it was just it, it kind of organically happened the same way that everything else happened mm. I mm. don't really feel a separation between business and art mm. um, and at the same time I know that a lot of people do struggle to make a living out of their art and I wish there was an easy way to fix that or solve that because there are so many talented, hardworking people mm. that can't seem to catch a break financially with it. Mm. And the only thing that does feel really true to me is that if you are following your deepest passions and really blocking out everything else, mm. I do think it always pays off. Yes. I really do and I think part of blocking everything out is every time you look outside of yourself it's doubt and you're never going to create what you want to create when you're telling yourself that you doubt yourself and I just yeah I wish because I know it's like saying that people can comprehend it but applying it is completely foreign uh, but I do think, like, listening to your story and talking mm -hmm. to you, um, there was a coach I was working with, and I still talk to him, and I've had him on the show as a guest, and he would talk about creating momentum around you and to mm -hmm. surround yourself with people who are doing things that you can learn, you can be inspired by, and you can have this, so you have this energy around you, so you're keeping you're thinking, because a lot of it, I truly believe, is how we think. It is, yeah, it's all and how we think. I mean, we can go into like quantum physics and yes. entanglement if you want, yeah. but it truly is how you think dictates your entire existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Um, something that came to me earlier when you were talking about modeling, but now, you know, we've discussed like photography, mm -hmm. managing models, um, your dance, travel. Uh, which in all these areas, I feel I can really dig deep in there. But I think, you know, between your jet lag and everything, <laughs> and yeah. we're losing the light. And, yeah. you know, it looks really beautiful and Loki's dying to get in. I love asking um, this question to everyone on the show, but especially women who work in front of the camera, who work in media, who act or who are models. 
What does it mean to be beautiful? To be beautiful. What is beauty to you? Do you mean physical or and visual what does, beauty? What does it mean to you? Like uh, it could in both senses. I think if we were talking about purely physical beauty, I think that we've been so trained to focus on one stereotypical version of it and become so resentful of that, that we almost are kept away from seeing the actual importance of beauty, surrounding yourself with visually beautiful things, whether that's flowers or art or... So I think there is a real importance to beauty, whether that's, you know, physical beauty or whatever else you have. But when I think of what it means to be beautiful, I think it means to just be truly aligned with your own essence. And I think that is when I feel most beautiful, mm -hmm. regardless of how I look. Um, it's just when I, I feel really in alignment with myself. That means morally, creatively, in my relationships, my behavior, the standards that I hold for myself, the way that I affect other people. Um, that's kind of what comes to mind for me. Mm. Yeah, I think if I died one day, or when I do die, and I look back, that feels like beauty, mm. you know? No, I, I completely agree. It's that the inside out, yeah. because we are surrounded by a lot of yeah, quote unquote, physically beautiful people, but mm. there is a different radiance mm. that comes with kindness. Totally, yeah, and, and integrity. Yes, integrity, and yeah. I think when we value, when we know that that is true beauty, then the physical beauty aspect of things won't be as charged. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's even. I mean, it kind of goes into like misogyny when we shame women for getting plastic surgery or doing anything that they want to their looks. We preach that it's the inside that matters, but then we shame women for having fun with the outside. If it's really the inside that matters, then let people do whatever they want. If they're mm -hmm. happy and they feel beautiful on the outside, that's great, that's fine. Um, and I think once we collectively, as a human society, get to a place where we really do recognize real beauty, um, you know, not just physically, then I think we'll actually be able to have fun with outer beauty mm -hmm. and all the different forms that it comes in. Mm. We won't be so caught up on, you know, a specific version of that or the media's portrayal of beauty and how narrow those standards are. Mm -hmm. So that's just an evolution of humankind, though, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank goodness we're having those conversations yeah. now and that's starting to evolve and change. And yeah. You know, I remember I talk about this often when I'm I'm turning 41 in a week, less than a week. I what remember month is it right? What August? So, so you're the what star sign are you then? Leo. Oh my God, I love Leo women. Ah. I really do. When is your birthday? March 28th. Okay. I literally almost Aries? just forgot that right now because my jet like yeah, I'm an ah. Aries. Okay. I'm like the fire most, sign. Yeah. Yes. So I'm mostly Leo, but my moon is in Cancer, which makes a lot of oh sense, God. which makes yeah. me very emotional totally and sensitive. That, yeah. And because a lot of times people are like, yes, you're such a Leo. When they see me on a stage, I MC mm. a lot of events. And I have that fire, but I'm also very sensitive. Yeah. So it's the both, you know. Well, the moon is more like the deeper you. And yes. the sun sign is more your outward personality. So that makes sense. Voila. Yeah. Yes. And I learned about it like just like really recently. Really? Yes, yes. And really into that, we actually had a Chinese astrology expert on the show, and she wow. really and she's giving me a session on Friday, yeah. like just one on one. Oh so I'm God, super yeah. excited. You I'll I'll share. Oh my God, I will share her information because I'm super into that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I love asking everyone what because our show is called the Inspired Life Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Where do you draw inspiration from and what inspires you in life? Nature. Mm. Definitely nature. Um, in fact, I am kind of doing my photography, not away from shooting people, but incorporating much more nature and wildlife. I've been seeing that. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's initially what I wanted to do. And the photos that you took in Rwanda. 
um, especially of the gorilla. That was in Uganda. Okay, that was in Uganda. But it was just very close. so. And I remember you mentioned that you were like just looking into his eyes, made you yeah. want to cry. Sometimes I, I tell. Cry. Okay. Yeah, I did cry. When I looked at Loki, my dog, when I got him, and the way he would look back at yeah. me, and the way his eyes would, sometimes people think it's a little bit out there. I would cry because of because his longing eyes right now. He's like he needs to be next to his mummy, yeah. and you know the way the amount of energy. He's like, hey, he lady, knows you told me I about know. Him. <laughs> and especially when he was a puppy, mm -hmm. because he'd been with me. I remember around a month, and I was worried would he bond or not. If the bonding was instantaneous, yeah. but when he would look at me with the love i would cry you probably have a soul contract to be in this life together yeah yeah, yeah no i everyone who meets him no joke like outside He's special that is what people say to me he is i'm just like what does that mean Something when people say that, that he is people say that to me that he is a special dog he is yeah what does that mean to you when you say that like i want to know i want to start asking people i think he has a higher level of consciousness than most dogs that's the only way I could yeah. describe it. He seems in tune. Mm. Like you could think something and he'll know what you're thinking. I mean, all animals are telepathic anyway, mm -hmm. so, but he seems extra in tune. Mm. Yeah, a little special soul. Mm, I'm crying. <laughs> my, he's my little baby child. He's my little baby child. Yeah, I swear cute. the show is about you, not about Loki, but he's the it's furry co-host. He's the furry co-host. He's very cute. Um, I know this I is sort like of I a cliche. <laughs> no, no, Sorry. no. It, it's it's this very um, yeah. Okay, I was asking you about inspiration. Oh yeah, nature. Yes, no, that is nature. My answer, yeah, okay, yeah. For sure. No, I and I love the photos that you were taking. On and that trip. goes for people as well. When I shoot people, I shoot animals and people the exact same way. Mm. I don't know why. Mm. <laughs> I noticed that actually with the gorillas, I was like, this is a, or like a giraffe. This is the same way I would shoot a human. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's amazing. Yeah. And I'm a fan of your work as a photographer. I mean, obviously as a model and then seeing your dancing, seeing your art. Your art's like really beautiful. Okay. And that was truly inspiring me to be like, I'm like, okay, that's it, it girl. <laughs> I'm Do like, it. I'm going to get, I'm going to get a canvas. I'm going to yeah. buy some paint because when I got this place, I've been here for a year now. Mm. I'm like, I'm going to paint outside and I still haven't done it. It's honestly, I also think that to myself, I'm like, paint in the sunshine it's actually the worst place to paint the light is so uneven you can't see what you're doing it dries too quickly um but just do it spontaneously mm, don't think about don't it don't think about it just don't think do about it. what you're gonna do i really like that one mm, oh i haven't painted that's like in the louvre it's a print I really do but for it. me yeah. that's just the doodle and something outside i'll show yeah, you just keep doing it thank you thanks yeah. for sharing that and because the show is based in vancouver mm -hmm. i love asking everyone is there a particular spot a trail, a restaurant, a gallery, Ooh. a hidden gem that you would like to share with us that you like going to? <laughs> yes. But you're like, I don't know if I want to share <laughs> because you'll find me there. <laughs> can I say a place that's not actually in Vancouver? I'll, it can I'll, be in BC. Yeah, um, there's a metaphysical and crystal shop in Nanaimo called Lobelia's Lair. Okay. And I love it there so mm, much. I haven't been there. I love it. Um, when I think of Vancouver, I'm actually really boring. I always work. Mm. I stay in my apartment a lot. But I can see the ocean from home, so I feel like I'm outside. Mm. I mean, the seawall mm -hmm. is close to me, first of all, so mm. I can go outside very easily. But I feel like Vancouver as a whole, I mean, it's kind of why I based myself here. Mm -hmm. It's just a perfect mix of nature and everything that I need. I find it very calming and rejuvenating. I don't know that I have a specific spot, but yeah. I, yeah, no, I do I get like it. to run into the woods. Mm -hmm. I like to, I had to stop because of the coyotes in Stanley Park, but I would like to just go in and, yeah. I do like Stanley Park. Yeah, yeah it's a, such a beautiful city, and I feel like I yeah. appreciate it even more after having traveled to oh other my places. Oh, God, yes. After, like we were just talking about yeah. when I came in, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, first of all, living in a, third, a first world country is wild. 
the, the fact having running I mean, water, hot water, hot electricity, water, electricity all the time. No cockroaches, most places. You know, it's um, you're not worried about mosquito biting you and getting malaria. Snakes. Yeah, I'm snakes. super scared of snakes. I I don't mind snakes. I used to. I used to have a reptile collection, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I used to... One of my interests used to be reptiles. Oh, wow. I had 27 reptiles in my room as a teenager. Okay. Uh, if that was the case now, I, I feel like <laughs> that I come to my home to visit my cats and my collection of... I rescued I'd be them. Like, yeah, it was, I was a like, philanthropic <laughs> okay. ordeal. Um, yeah. How did I get to that? This is my brain. Yeah, I know. We're just talking about the beautiful nature in Vancouver and how yeah. blessed we are to be here versus yes. you know, anywhere no else snakes. in the world. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing that can kill you. Mm -hmm. I mean, like bears. There's no venomous animals here. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think just Vancouver as a whole is. Mm. Um, it's a, People don't realize it, I guess, especially when you maybe don't travel to certain types of places, but it's idyllic. It's, it's also insane and expensive so expensive but um if you are blessed enough to live here mm -hmm. very very lucky completely just in general i completely agree yeah. very blessed to be here yeah yes and you know sure. maybe i'll be abundant and blessed and be creative and you do the be. work that thank you you will be thank you yes <laughs> do the work that we love and are passionate about and yes mm -hmm. and to say it like yes yeah. with certainty that's it's that's inevitable. what i'm learning that's what i'm learning from you that's yeah. that that is the part you know just be completely mm -hmm. delusional mm -hmm. like i have been my whole life but i've been right every time so yeah <laughs> i i love that i yeah. need like more of that energy in my life actually i'm sure things have like not worked out at a certain point but i just like i just don't acknowledge it i yeah. just don't even because i don't have any memories of thinking i was delusional yeah just it's inevitable yeah Anything is possible. Look at the universe, the cosmos. Like, look at we're floating in the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. Anything is not completely, complete. Like even anything. The, and one of the things I truly appreciated you sharing that you were like, you know, I barely finished high school. It's like oh no, I didn't. Finish. Didn't finish. Okay, so <laughs> I for have me, no high school diploma. Uh, for me, I barely did, but yeah. everything that I have learned has been on the go. Yeah. And I remember like someone who I've actually never met, they're based in London and they've coached me and helped do PR for me over the years. And they said to me, never say aspiring, you are. You are a professional. Aspiring, yeah. That's yeah, why... they're just like, you are a professional actor. You are a professional yeah. model. And it's like, you're putting that energy out there and mm. this is bound to happen. And same in, I didn't go to film school. You don't need to. I didn't go to film school, yeah. didn't go to broadcasting school, but I've done all of that, the mm -hmm. work, as a correspondent had shows. Yeah, totally. Just by being like, okay, we're going to do this. I'm sure those things can be helpful for oh, many for people sure. going into for these sure. fields, but it's not um, essential, um, no. depending on the life that you've Every, got. And I think everyone's learning methods mm -hmm. are different. Like, I'm an experiential learner. I'm not a book go to yeah. school it's not Same. how my brain works I, can't take the I need to be thrown into the wind mm -hmm. and put on the parachute okay here we go do you read manuals oh. like if you get a new appliance I can't or Same. I can't I can't I would rather I, d d do it wrong yes. and then have to fix it and yeah. then learn from that experience and then I know how to do it my read brain a does not work in that I think it's I'm no. not a linear person do you think it's like a fire sign thing yeah. I mean, just like blame it on that. Blame it on that. Yeah, I would rather do something and make a mistake and then fix it than, than take the time in the beginning to like learn how to, that's really, maybe that's bad. Who knows? Yeah. Who cares? I think we're more into the so doing. Far. We're more into the, I'm yeah, more just do it. doer. I'm more of a doer. There's a yeah. line from Neil Simon's play called Barefoot in the Park. And I did a little rendition of that many years ago. And you mm -hmm. talk about there's two types of people in the world. There's watchers and there's doers. Mm the watchers sit around watching while the doers do yeah it's true you know yeah i want to finish off by asking it do you, are you into podcasts are you into audiobooks reading books like you know you were saying you yeah. do you really get into subjects is there a particular that's really stood with you that you would mm. like to share with us that you'd like to share with me my favorite book mm -hmm. yeah um i do listen to some podcasts but nothing really 
I can't do audiobooks. Mm -hmm. I, I'll try. I do read a lot. I read a lot of fiction and sometimes nonfiction if it's a specific topic. My favorite book is A Little Life, but mm. it's hard to recommend it to people because it's so painful to read. It's it's so it's the most beautiful book ever written, mm. but it's very sad. A lot of it is mm. very sad. Um, but I love that. Um, podcasts. I'm weird. Like I sit on a plane in dead silence, doing nothing, not watching anything. I just sit there. I was wondering this about myself. Why? That's I meditative. I think. Yes. I feel like for me, it's such a special space when we're, when I'm traveling. To me, when I am even in an airport, mm. but especially in an airplane with the clouds, I feel like there is a different portal and yeah. the possibility of things like. If there was, you know, talking about quantum physics and stuff, if mm. there was this, my inner child is super like anything is possible when yeah. I'm in an airplane, when I'm at airports, yes. because I feel like I'm going into this different reality. When Taking I come away back, everything. when I come back, I'm going to be different. Things are going to be different, mm -hmm. you know, and especially yeah. when you're a creative spirit and when you go to different places you take parts of them with you. I yeah. I feel like, you know, for me, it's like I couldn't understand my connection to Paris, but I'm like, I don't know if I believe in French, in past lives, but I feel like if there were, I had a past life there because I know how much I resonated with that city. You've definitely probably had a few lives there. And I mean, no such thing as past lives. Everything's happening concurrently. Time and yeah. space doesn't exist. So you probably have many lives there. Mm. Yeah. I feel similarly about Paris, actually. I feel at home mm. there. Yeah. Like I've had lives or I have lives where I'm there. I call Paris my lover. You know, I used yeah. to think I would go to Paris when I'm married or something like that. And I I moved there by myself. People are yeah. like, did you meet some of them? I'm like, no, do you speak French? No. Uh, un petit peu. You know, I'm just, I, just, I just moved and that's it. You yeah. take the chance. To go back a month? I'm sorry? Do you go back? I'm going back in September. Yeah. So in like a month, yes. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking Good. forward to it. Yeah. You should. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm trying to think, though, if I do have a better answer for, like, a book or a podcast or something. You mean, like, self-help things or... A anything. Art, poetry, anything. Mm. I do have poetry that I love. Um... I've forgotten what the actual book is called. I have to get back to you on that. Okay, you'll Instagram it. I will. Send it I'll to send me. it to you. Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, I truly appreciate you being such a trooper coming here after <laughs> flying for over 32 plus hours. No problem. And, you know, I'm so happy we got you because, I, A, I wanted to meet you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanted to share this conversation with our audience mm -hmm. because I found you very fascinating and interesting um, from the journey you've had and how you're this multi-talented artist and excelling in those careers and also very humble. So Thank I you. really appreciate you taking the time. I'm and, so happy that I did it. Yeah, and wishing you like a fantastic summer, you know, you. The, whatever little summer we've got left. Yeah. And, um, and I, I can see that, you know, you're going you're soaring not that i can see i know you are soaring <laughs> and uh, we will have to do this again because i want yeah. to have more deeper conversations with people sure, whether yeah. through my next instagram live or podcast mm. and talking more about the creative journey you have Thank to you. paint something before next time i see you oh yes i will <laughs> i'll be like oh here's some stick figures <laughs> yeah no whatever yeah. you come up with will be good thank you thank, thank you. you jenna and if you felt inspired, if you felt empowered while watching this, please make sure to let us know. Again, it's been my pleasure and my honor to bring you these conversations with amazing humans who call our beautiful city home.